Okay, hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Robin. And we are the Contented Nomads. We got our bus from South Dakota. It was a South Dakota school bus, so it, you know that comes with some issues. We have a little bit of rust that we have to deal with that we weren't planning on uh, from before. Um, but it's, you, know, you gotta think about where you're getting your bus from. Uh, her name is Clarity, with four kids and a golden doodle. For two and a half years, that's what she's brought to our life. Come on in. This is where we spend the majority of our time. We recently did a remodel where we actually extended out the couch more to include more areas to sit. And the kids' car seats, the cushions pull up and there's seat belts behind there that the kids' car seats clip into. Yeah, attached to the frame and with a metal strap to add security to them. Our kids are eight, six, four, and two. I think they like it. They love it. Yeah. yeah. For some, I mean, our youngest daughter was born on the road. So she's never lived in a house. She's never known anything different. Our four-year-old really doesn't remember any of our previous houses, so this is what he knows. And then our older two love it because we travel around to as beautiful places as we can, take them on adventures, teach them how to fish. We were just with uh, Luke and Rachel Davis from schoolie.com out in Asheville, North Carolina, and they were teaching them how to weld. Um, and so, you know, they, they love it because of the experiences that they get. For the design of the couch, we actually used to have two of the original bus seats here, and that's what the kids' car seats strapped into. Um, that was okay, but we came to the realization when we wanted to redo some of the interior to make it more functional, we realized that everything needed to be able to do double duty. And um, so we opted for the L-shaped couch um, just to kind of um, visually break up the space. Um, there's more storage under here too. This is the new section, um, but the couch needed to do double duty in being both a couch and where the kids' car seats were. Um, strapped into, whereas with the bus seats, it was just single use. So it actually does triple duty because under here is where we have a lot of our diapers, swim floaties, um, wipes, like you do. And uh, under here is what school supplies, it's our electrical panel, mm -hmm. our solar runs down onto there, uh, a lot of cooking herbs are mm -hmm. stored under here. So uh, really just three functions. So our kids are homeschooled. Um, and we never really wanted to have them in traditional school. And then when we decided to hit the road, we thought it was just a natural fit. So um, it works really well. We're under the state laws of California, so we have to abide by those homeschool laws. But um, as far as curriculum goes, we, we make our own curriculum. And we also are able to supplement with a lot of um, need experiences that count as education and that education can be so much more broad um, and the world is such an amazing teacher. We are uh, road scholars. Yeah, it, it's it, like the technical name of our school. That's the name of our it's school the is the road scholars, scholars. Yeah. and she's the principal and I'm the headmaster. So. I should be the headmaster. You should, you should be both. I, I should be, be the janitor. <laughs> we wanted a little functionality here because we do drink a lot of coffee um, and so yeah we drink a lot of <laughs> coffee and, and other stuff. And so this holds, uh, this created a little storage area here, as well as a nice place to set cups uh, and have a little more lounging material than before. One thing, you know, you mentioned it, uh, uh, that the couch breaks up the space. One of the things we like is that it does come out a little bit so that you don't have kind of the submarine feel going all the way back. Mm -hmm. And this is a nice feature too. This is just kind of like our, like the dog leash usually hangs here and the, the diaper bag and the baby sling, you know, so that way we're going out the door, we just grab what we need and go. Hats. Um, so this has kind of been a nice feature to, again, visually break up the space. It, it also helps separate when we're traveling that this is the driving area. Daddy's driving, the, don't go past here. Like even if, if we're parking, this is the driving area. This is, you know, so it helps create that space difference as well. So the couch, actually, we found a local upholstery shop that Tucson. did our um, cushions for us. It was just, we had so much going on and we were trying to finish so much that I know how to sew. I could have done the cushions, but it was just one of those things where I was like, I'm just going to outsource this. We did not go with vinyl because it can get sticky, it, it, we, we didn't do vinyl or leather even though it's easier to wipe off and clean. 
which would be the natural choice for kids, but we also have a dog that jumps up and can tear stuff up. So we wanted kind of a, a rough material that could hide potential stains easily. Yeah. Um, but that was still comfortable and looked nice. Come on in. Yeah. So this counter space, this counter space was great. This was new uh, counter space to us. Um, for about two years, our counter space only went to here. And so last January, we got rid of a little table over here that we never used, expanded most of our galley out that way towards you know where the uh, bus seats used to be, built this for more storage, and then rebuilt this out of maple um, to give us a lot more counter space. And that's been an enormous game changer. Yeah, the, the kitchen has been really helpful. One of the reasons we chose to do a schoolie is because, well, and I guess you could do this in an RV as well, but we, I cook a lot and we make a lot of stuff from scratch. So having a kitchen that was really functional was super important. Um, so having the added counter space was just a huge game changer. Just making sure that our kitchen worked really well was very, very important. So we have a bigger fridge, the stovetop and the oven combo. We were a little bit concerned that doing the storage like this and also the open shelving here that things might fall, but we really don't have a lot of movement. Um, I mean, if we hit a pothole, something might fall, but these are also really deep so we can push everything back. Mm -hmm. And these shelves here have a lip so we haven't lost anything off of here yet, um, yet, <laughs> or over here. Um, it's worked out really well. You're more intentional with where you put things when they're open, mm -hmm. whereas when it's a closed door, what happens is, you know, in, uh, in airplanes, they say storage overhead may have shifted um, during the flight. That's what happens. We would walk up, we'd open it, oh, yeah. and all of our dishes would fall out. <laughs> And so we haven't had that problem uh, at all since. So I'll show you when we do the outside. Um, we have two of the kind of just barbecue grill propane tanks hooked up and it's piped under the bus. One goes to our hot water heater in the back um, and then we have one that goes to the fridge and here. Reason why we have it at the fridge as well is just to have redundancies built in because there are days like today where our solar is not working and that can drain our batteries pretty quick. So this little piece, um, one of the things that I really like um, is making it feel homey. So I found this at Goodwill and we bolted this to the, this is the wheel well. So we boxed in the wheel well and bolted this on. So we are able to just have, you know, the books that we're working on, colored pencils, there's some other um, supplies down in there. Um, it's just a nice homey piece. I like having the books close by to the couch so we can sit and just grab whatever book we're reading and keep going with it. But I just like the the real things and not like the built-in RV stuff. So along with the homeschool stuff, this is where we do our morning and evening prayers and it's just a very centering, grounding corner in our bus. As a filter, it's a totally worthwhile it's filter. We've had it for three, four, eight, five years. No, like eight years? seven years. We've had it for like six or seven years, something like that. We and had it in the house. We did, and we would take it. Life. We would take it camping with us. We've taken it on vacation with us. I mean, it's amazing. I feel like for bus life, it's great because you can never be certain of your quality of water. So, and also like if you're filling up from your tanks, your your you know your plastic tanks. It's kind of like, ooh, let's just do another round of filtering and we'll call it good. If I was doing the floor again, which we may, because we've had several uh, food catastrophes, um, when, <laughs> when our bus first overheated and we left it in Phoenix for a month, we had also 25 pounds bought 20, of butter. 25 pounds of butter, butter in the freezer. Well, a propane fridge will last about a week and a half off our propane tanks, not a month. So we came back and there was melted butter all over the floor. So when it gets hot in here, it smells like, it smells like a movie theater. Um, so, part, so I would use water resistant 
thinner uh, flooring with a wood allure. Like when you travel as much as we do and we're moving from dry to really humid, um, the floors expand, they push up, they get down, they get loose. So that's been kind of a bummer. Yeah. That'd be something we would rethink. Make sure it's not too slick, because if you're driving, the dog can sometimes go <laughs> back, especially if you're going up a hill. It's so <laughs> some texture can help. True, true story. Yeah. So our sink is has two different basins, and that's kind of nice because you can put the dirty dishes on one side and then wash them on the other side. As far as for functionality and space, it's it works. It works really well. I mean, we do prep over here, and then our, we're able to cook, you know, over here. Yeah, and dishes can be done over here yeah. while, you know, prep moves to dishes. Um, plating up happens about here. And what's nice is with it being on both sides, like the kids can help out in different ways. Yeah. Um, one can start doing dishes, or if we're making something yummy, we just know not to put it over here, because then they all climb up on here and start eating it. And so it's nice to have this option for the kids to be moving back and forth as well. The AC works. We have an older RV unit, which is far less energy efficient. So it works when we're plugged in or when our generator's running. It does not run, even the fan itself hardly runs off of the batteries themselves. We would maybe go with something a little more uh, energy efficient, one of the newer Dometics, because mm. um, those do a lot of output with a lot less energy draw. Um, but hey, when, it's, when we're plugged in, uh, it, it works great. We're only in Tucson, Arizona in almost June because of family obligations. Usually we try to travel with the weather. Yeah, so we'll be spending the summer up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so we, yeah, we just travel with the weather because it's almost impossible to keep a bus cool. We decided to keep a lot of the windows because I like the way that it looks. Um, I like the charm of it. We do have these um, only on this one side. I think that if you were taking out the windows, you probably would have better climate control because the windows can be kind of drafty. Um, and it's just like, a, it's like a fish tank in a way. The so. reality though is even if you're putting in a bunch of energy efficient windows, you still have a lot of windows. And those windows up there, they're big and they're as energy inefficient as anything. So you're always battling the weather. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, again, it's like you live in a tin can, so it's like, ooh, how do you keep your... It's only so optimized you can be. Well, you also increase your weather tolerance. Mm -hmm. So if you spend time in the heat a lot, you start to acclimate to the heat, more so than living in a hot place and staying in air conditioning all day. We were in Tennessee for about a month, and it was hot and it was humid, and she was very pregnant. We were out there to have our baby, and you just got used to it. You, you learned kind of how to maneuver through the day. Then we spent a week after baby was born, we spent a week in an air conditioned cabin. And we came back out and it was like, has it been this hot the whole time? Oh my gosh. So traveling with the weather, you do increase your range of both heat tolerance and cold tolerance. Okay, so this little, um I, I really wanted this. This was part of our remodel. Um, this is just a little desk. There's a, a, a stool that pops out that we bring and the kids can have a snack or work on schoolwork or color or just have a nice little spot to be. Um, obviously, just one at a time, but it's just kind of a nice little, little feature. Yeah, it just pops down like that. So I like that. Our fridge is an older nor cold. Um, and for the most part, it's been okay. He likes the idea of it being on propane, the, the, for it to do propane, but if it's I had, handy. I know, if I had my way, I probably would lobby for an energy efficient um, electric, just because it'd be a little bit bigger. Yeah, it'd be a little taller for um, sure. And we are a bigger family, and that would just be nice. This just doesn't store a whole lot. I mean, we make it work. It's like a game of Tetris every time you go grocery shopping, but it works. So pantry storage, um, 
with our remodel, we put in doors, which has been really great. So prior to this point, we just had like a little janky curtain. So when we put the kids to bed, we just would have to like whisper and everything. It was really annoying. So um, Rob built these doors and they can clip like that. And yeah. then this is, and the kids' bunks also got doors. So this is the bunk area. We have four kids. So the two olders sleep up here. The two younger sleep down here. Each kid gets a drawer for clothes, as well as one just dedicated to shoes. If you have small kids, you know, shoes are always missing. So um, these, these, were, these were made uh, actually here in Tucson. They're sliding wood doors. Um, and this is just a two by four down below that was grooved out. And then a piece of maple up here that was grooved down. We built little shims to guide it over the uh, emergency exit here. Uh, when we drive, you're asking about heat and you know traveling with weather. When it's hot, we drive with the windows open and with this open, and that blows a lot of heat out. So our air conditioner when we drive is just the gas pedal going fast. And then here's our bathroom. We have a nature side. These go like that to close it in. But we also have storage here that we didn't want to jeopardize. So this opens here, you know, if we need to access here or we can open it like that to access the toilet. There are showers on this side, so our towels are over here. Yeah, and this is just a stock tank for a bathtub. Stock tank for bathtub. This is actually the kids do use it as a bathtub, mm -hmm. which is great. It fits them. It's also a shower for us. And then this is our eco temp water heater over here. So we just got ours. We had a mare before, and uh, I thought there was a problem with the mare, so I took it out. Turns out the issue was uh, a failing regulator on the propane. Um, so it just wasn't giving us the amount of propane that we needed. Um, to really make the water hot. Uh, the e this EcoTemp has been working great. We got a used one and I didn't attach all of the water all the way and we tested it outside first, thank God, because uh, it exploded in a fireball. <laughs> um, and so I went with a new one and it's working much better. And then our bed is just right back here, we have storage underneath our bed. Our, yeah. our, our bus is a diesel puller, so we have no engine in the back. So all of that under our bed is storage. Storage, water tank, and water pump are over on this side. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you, we do only have a 37 gallon water tank, which for a family of six is not a lot, but it's doable. It's, it is um, doable. So that's been nice. This is another door that we added. Um, Obviously, it was a home done job, but uh, uh, it works. It's got some insulation in it, and so that gives us a little bit of privacy. Like we've got a storage shelf over here that stores kind of our everyday carry stuff slash diapers for when babies come into bed. Um, Just like a nightstand. Bottles and yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a nightstand over here, and then bookshelf up along the top. And then what's nice is when we're parked on the beach somewhere, we can always raise this up. And when we're parked in a Walmart, raise put that back down. All storage back here, and we either have access through here or open up the back. So stuff that we store maybe long term that we rarely ever use uh, is stored kind of in the middle area. Otherwise, like a lot of your sewing stuff and a lot of my tools are right here. Yeah. And then uh, fishing stuff, kind of outdoorsy stuff. Hammocks. Is, yeah, hammocks stored in the back. Yeah. Gotcha. We have lots of cabinetry back here, actually, which is nice. And we do have hang up stuff because I do work as a financial planner during the day. And sometimes uh, I do need to throw on a suit jacket. So it's nice to have some hang up uh, storage as well. Yeah. All right, so this has been the inside. Uh, let's go outside. I'll show you a uh, battery bank, propane, and where we got our new generator. So out here, this is the back of our fridge. 
you know you can sometimes you need to do a little maintenance back here it, uh, it is you know you do have the flu back here it is a propane fridge so every once in a while you need to do a little maintenance back here uh, this fridge and the vent was installed beforehand um, it came minorly converted which is great because this was actually our third bus and after converting to myself while working a full nine to five job and then living in another bus I need something that was a little more ready to go than buying this one blank and cutting it out. Um, one of the things we did recently, I do like redundancies in uh, what we do for power. And so we, uh, we worked with Luke and Rachel Davis of schoolie.com out in Asheville and they helped weld together and put together this uh, generator and inverter extremely quiet and gives out good power output. Cost about $790. Um, it's working okay. I need to make our uh, air conditioner a little bit more efficient. You can get what's called like a, I think it's called a capacitor up top and that keeps the energy flow up there more stable and that will make it a little easier on the generator. But we like it because it is quieter than a car sitting in idle. And because it's Harbor Freight, which is good quality, but not the best, we do have the two-year warranty repair program on it. It's where we keep the kids' bikes, as well as our stroller, and uh, our handy-dandy grill, which keeps falling apart. Uh, when we're traveling around in cities, the stroller becomes our home base because we can't park in certain cities very close to where all the neat stuff is. So we do a lot of walking. We use public transportation a lot. So our stroller has really been a godsend, but we're looking for a new one. This is where our water goes. You know, so that's on the outside. That was cut in and we can do direct or into a water tank um, with water pump. And again, we are only at 37 gallons, but we make efficient use of it. Uh, yeah, you know, we stay with enough friends or if we need to, we can pop into an RV park and just fill up on, on the road. This is a gray water tank for kitchen sink and for the bathtub. And then we have a separate one up here just for the kitchen sink because we use the kitchen sink extremely often. So it gets its own gray water tank. So right now we're charging our batteries, but this is our battery bank. We have four AGMs in here. This is a box, it's two by twos with some really thick three quarter inch plywood wrapped in some, uh, some really thin metal sheeting. And then this is just the side of the bus cut out and reattached back as a door. We did the same here. This is where our propane tanks are, as well as any extra tarps or um, uh, extension cords, etc. Now this, this is kind of cool, this is our uh, we have this hardwired into the back of our uh, transfer switch. And so this kind of comes out and we can plug in straight from there. So from, from the road, uh, the one question we get asked a lot is, as a traveling family, we have a lot of responsibilities. We have a lot of obligations. Um, how do we make money from the road? Uh, first and foremost, as a career, I am a financial strategist. And so I help people uh, either with financial strategies or investment management, um, and I can do all of that from the road. But as Contented Nomads, we do have two products that will be coming out. They'll be in the description down below. Um, one is all the ins and outs, the complete guide of living and traveling as a family on the road. And then the other one will be geared more towards the nine nuts and bolts or financial strategies you need to get hammered out. And it'll be a step-by-step -step guide to get you to be able to start living your dream of traveling on the road as well. Um, also, <laughs> we also are starting a wallet shop. So one of the issues with thin wallets is you don't get to carry as many cards. With this, you can carry up to 16 cards, still have a bill fold, and bends with you as you sit. So it doesn't tear up your jean pockets or give you sciatica in your lower back while you're driving a bus. So be sure to check that out as well. If you're interested in following along with our adventures, we are Contented Nomads on Instagram.